Hey, it's time for another edition of Bama and Bourbon, our podcast where we talk Alabama football and we talk bourbon with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I'm Lance Taylor from The Next Round. Um, welcome into another week coming yeah. off the of bye. Did you get uh, rest this past weekend? I did. Uh, I got caught up a little bit. Fortunately, little man brought home another illness from daycare. I swear, <laughs> it's like every other week. Nonstop, He's man. Me. But uh, yeah, good Halloween weekend you. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I actually, I did a couple of bourbon flights this weekend. So I used some of our uh, former... Um, participants in Bama nice. and Bourbon, and um, I just sat back. I really didn't do much of anything, but uh, watched good. a lot of football. And What's your Rams pushing the chips all to the middle of the table? No, man, I'm I'm excited about it. Did you hear the crazy story that Von Miller throws this hundred thousand dollar Halloween party? And like one really? of the reports was that because of the rookies he invited over, he wanted them to chip in. And he got so pissed at the end because none of them would chip in. Oh, that's really? one of the reports out there. I don't know how accurate that is. That That's one of the things that led to him being traded. Really? Uh, that's what they're saying. Now, that's one of those off-the-radar. Yeah. It seems ridiculous. And I was it, really impressed because he, he held a press conference and he thanked 50 members of the, the Broncos players, staff, all of it. Like, by name. Yeah. There, he, I mean, he's former NFL Man of the Year. Yeah. I mean, and obviously a great player. So, yes, I'm all excited about that. Um so today, Wilderness Trail Bourbon Whiskey. Wilderness Trail Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I've never had it before. First time I've ever heard of it. Uh, not good colors, good. Love the bottle. We always talk about the bottle every week. It's got a sweet aftertaste. Very sweet aftertaste. There are some people that love sweet bourbons. I like it. Um, I think it's pretty smooth. It's 100 proof too. So. A little bit about it, again, Aaron and I, first time we've ever tried Wilderness Trail. It is a small batch again. Uh, they go on to say it is offered as a single barrel bottled in bond. Uh, two special releases in one bottle. Um, Danville, Kentucky. Danville, Kentucky. They said when they first pull it out, it's 137 proof. They get it down to 100 Oof. proof somehow. So, um, Co-founders Shane Baker and Pat Heist. So there you go. It's part of the uh, part of the trail too. Danville, though, have you been to Danville? I, haven't, I missed that part of it. Well, uh, anyway, Bama and Bourbon. Uh, we are previewing another really good bourbon. It is brought to you by the Beverage Place, located next to the PGA Superstore on Highway 280. Pink Package, located across from the Target, next to Arby's on 280. Hard to believe we are in the month of November. Crazy. Yeah. Two thirds so, of the regular season gone. Um, the more you watch this thing unfold, and we'll see what happens with Auburn and A and M this weekend. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've got to take on that game. But if Auburn gets by a and they're just becoming that, that scary yeah. monster that lurks. Yeah. And you've always talked about the house of horrors that is Jordan Hare for Nick Saban. I haven't looked it up, but someone gave me the stat that Nick Saban is 1-5 in five at Jordan Hare against ranked Auburn teams. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if that goes back to, to well, LSU. Or, and they're going to be ranked, even if they lose yes. to a this weekend, unless they lost to Mississippi State, too, but you don't see them losing this both those games. This is one of those stereotypical Auburn teams where they're not very good in the beginning of the year. But they just keep getting better mm-hmm. and better. If I were Alabama, that's a very scary game. It is. Because even if they lose to Texas A&M, if they beat Alabama, Auburn's your West champ. Which is crazy because of the three-way tie, right? Yep. So, and again, this is Bama and Bourbon, but we do talk a little SEC. Well, Auburn's on the schedule. And and that is the the, the giant that seems to be lurking for Alabama. But I brought this up today. Like, So, obviously, Bo Nix has developed. He's gotten a lot better as a quarterback. Their offensive line is not good. Um, They don't really have any weapons outside of Tank and Hunter. Um, in that backfield, and Tank really hasn't been Tank up until this past weekend. He's tight ends a lot, but not any. Yeah, Shanker's not good, but yeah, he's not, you not know, a playmaker. He's not Brock Bowers. He's just a solid football team. Yeah, I got to give Harson a lot of credit. When they hired him, I did say this. I like the out of the box thinking. Yeah. I wasn't sure that he was going to be a guy that, that would be able to come into the SEC West and have any success. I really believe they were 6-6 six and six or 7-5 and five this I year. I 7-5. And, five. Was and, and, I mean, they've got everything in front of them. If they went out, they're in the college football They playoff. do. The one thing, he's gonna if he's going to last in the SEC, and Dan Mullen has been the, the, the subject of this this week, you got to recruit. Yeah. And he is not recruiting well. So, yeah. unless he's going to lean heavily on transfer, uh, he's not going to have a roster. So, he's he's got to bring in a staff that's going to recruit. So Alabama was off obviously last week. Now they're taking on LSU, and and you were there uh, yeah. nineteen months ago. Well, hell, I guess it's been two years. I continue to say nineteen months on this yeah. LSU thing. Two years yeah. ago in Bryant, uh, Bryant Denny, that the, the atmosphere was incredible. Two against Joe yeah. Burrow, uh, back and forth game. It the is president hard, was in attendance. The president was there. It is hard to believe we have gone from <laughs> that matchup to back to back years where Alabama has been a twenty nine point favorite. And if you if you looked at the injury situation for LSU, 
their entire starting secondary is out. Yeah, they basically have a NFL roster now. I mean, it's I think it's under sixty scholarship it's crazy. guys. And you know, I, I do think there's a certain um, you know Nick Saban. By the way, this aroma is really good. Yeah, Nick Saban talked about this. I was going to get your best shot. Like so, he, you know, LSU can kind of certainly I think come in there and put up a fight for a little while, but their depth is just not in a position where they're going to hang with Alabama. Yeah, and you know, and I have asked this question many times. I don't know how good of a quarterback Max Johnson is. He's got no shot because their offensive line is bad. Um, Davis Price has been decent, but Jake Peets doesn't seem like he's figured this offense out, their new offensive coordinator. And obviously, Kayshawn Boutte was a great weapon that is no longer... Not there. Maybe. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned the secondary. I mean, Stingley and Ricks were guys they could yeah. lean on. I, I, I mean... I think Alabama names their score if they want to. They could. And here's the thing, though. I mean, how many times have we said, as a no-name quarterback, actually did fairly well the last few years against Alabama? I don't know? see it this weekend, though. I don't Do either, you? but it wouldn't surprise me if he made some plays. Yeah. Uh, so this is Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Settles from The Athletic. I'm Lance Taylor. We talk Alabama football. We talk bourbon. This weekend is the, or this week's Wilderness Trail, Kentucky Straight Bourbon, 100 proof. Um, again, the packaging's great. Um, you know, the color's a little light. Um, you like the coloring, right? I do like the coloring. Um, I like the taste. I'm getting way too comfortable drinking my bourbon neat with no ice. And I catch myself at the house now. And again, I did flights of bourbon. My older brother came in town. He's a big bourbon guy. And we sat back and we just, we sampled bourbon all Saturday night. If you get the true flavor of it. You really do. When you drink it neat. And uh, this is obviously always fun. So we suggest stopping into the beverage place yep. or the pink package store and picking up a bottle of Wilderness Trail, Kentucky. It's really, really good. So do you think this weekend we will see against LSU? This is a game you probably know you're going to win going into, so you obviously don't want to get Bryce Young hurt. Right. But going back, the last time we saw Bryce out, his ability to make those plays yeah. with the feet, do you think we see any design runs for Bryce? No. I don't think it's in the office. I don't think it's been installed in the office. I, when I say I don't think it's in the office, I, I mean, I don't think it's been installed in the office. Obviously, you have packages where you could run them if you wanted to because you've got stuff in there for Jalen Milrow. But that's not installed in the offense because that's not part of what they want Bryce to do. He's having to a lot of times. Yeah. So I think what you want to do is you want to establish your offensive line. And they haven't been good. We've talked about it. Right tackle has been a huge issue. Chris Owens ranks second to last in the SEC in, in pressures given up. Would you say most disappointing player on this team, just based on expectations, I don't know what the expectation for Chris Owen was, even if he was going to start, right. but would you say more disappointing the season he's having or Jaleel Billingsley? I think Jaleel. Because Jaleel had, it was in front of him. He could have played himself into a borderline first-round pick. And with the discipline issues, the immaturity that he showed, and now the hands issues that's been called into question, Texas A&M against Tennessee. I don't think I don't think uh, I, I I think it would be he would be ill advised to try out for the NFL this year. I think he needs another year. But you know when we talk about Chris Owens, when we came back, everyone, including myself, we penciled him in at center. It's disappointing to me that Alabama doesn't have a right tackle ready to go. Um, the fact that you had to move your center to right tackle, it's it's certainly great. You have the versatility to move guys to play multiple positions. But the fact that Chris Owens is now started. Eight games out at right tackle. It's been an issue, and they don't have anyone that can come in and, and spot him is, is, is troubling. Injury-wise, where's Alabama? Pretty healthy. You know, they got some guys that um, the week off certainly helped. You know, Drew Sanders sounds like he's going to play. Um, so I think they're in a pretty good spot injury-wise. So moving forward, um, you don't see any problems this week? Nope. You lay the 28 and a half, wherever it is? Mm, probably, yeah. Yeah, I think I do too. I mean... Nick Saban knows that uh, Orgeron's dead man walking, yeah. but is this the payback? You were there. You covered the yeah. game. Brown was on the field. He got the video of Orgeron saying, this yeah. is our house. I mean, is there anything that lingers with Saban? I think, I mean, he's never going to keep guys in just to run out the score. Like, if, if the starters are anything in the game, they'll be running the football. But I do think there's a message to be sent when players from the other team run to your re recruits that are visiting and say, come to LSU. When you, when you put on the show they did in the locker room that got leaked, uh, Roll Tide what? Yeah. FU. Um, all that stuff, people remember. And maybe not so much Saban, because I don't think Saban particularly cares about that, but the players do. Isn't this an opportunity to get some of these young offensive linemen in, get them a little action? So. I would think so. And the same with the young receivers. We, we just And they, we haven't seen a ton of the other offensive linemen. One, because I think they've been trying to get this starting five just to be cohesive, to have five fingers form into a fist the way they play together, and it just hasn't happened. I don't know if it's – I'd be curious, and I haven't talked to anyone on the inside, 
this off the bye week, but I wonder if they did at least look at some guys out in different places. Just to, you know, now it's time for experimenting. I mean, they were working on Auburn in Arkansas during the bye week. So I, I just, uh, I don't, Nick Saban doesn't seem like the type to play games in that regard. Like, if they're putting out the message that Chris Owens is the best we got, I tend to believe them. It's Bama and Bourbon, podcast we do every week here on the next round with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I'm Lance Taylor. We talk bourbons. It's Wilderness Trail, Kentucky Straight Bourbon, whiskey single-barreled, bottled, and bond. That's what we're talking today. It's brought to you every week by the Beverage Place, located next to the PGA Superstore on Highway 280. Pink Package, located across from the Target, next to Arby's on 280. One-stop shop for liquor, beer, seltzers, wine, sodas, mixers, cigars, ice, even fresh lemons and limes. By the time anybody sees this, well, I guess some people might see it tonight, more than likely the four or yeah. the, the four and the two will be unveiled in the college football playoff rankings the first of, of the year. Your top four right now? Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, and probably Oregon. Really? Yeah. Oregon's got the best win of anybody on the season, I think. I mean, I don't disagree going to Columbus and winning that game, but just when I watch Oregon, it just doesn't. But but I've I've said this. I mean, I think there's only three teams that can win a national championship, and I think that's Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio Ohio State. State. Did I say Ohio State? Um, Yeah, he did. He had three. I think – listen, I I think every other – I think Georgia's the most complete team. And when I say complete, I realize they have deficiencies on offense. But in terms of off the field – the way they have, they compete. The way they've come together. The way they play discipline. They are the most complete team, and I, I they, they might just have it. This is just yeah, the year. It might be because I thought they played not great football last week. They had that that final two and a half minutes in the first half where they, they scored the twenty one points. points. Yeah. But, you know, they were sloppy. They turned the football over three times. Yeah. They still win by 27 against a rival. And Florida's not a bad team. You saw them in Gainesville yeah. against Alabama. It reminds me a lot of Alabama's 2015 team. Offense wasn't very dynamic. Good offensive line. Could run the football with Derrick Henry. And they had the number one defense in the country that year. That's, that's what Georgia looks like to me, except Georgia's defense plays more like Alabama's 2016 defense. You know what would be fascinating is to see either the 2019 LSU offense or the 2020 Alabama offense against this Georgia defense. I think offense will win. I just think that's where we are. I, 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 I tend to agree with you. Like those two offenses, I don't care what you were rolling out there defensively. They were going to score 35 points. And, and what's, what's material materially different from Georgia's defense last year that Alabama put 38 on? It's, it's a lot of the same guys out yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah. Alabama won that game. It was a close game going into the fourth No, I quarter. think the difference is Alabama just doesn't have the, the players they had yeah. offensively. But if you put, you know, 2009, if you're asking that question, that, Georgia 2021 is better. And I will say Stetson Bennett is a much better quarterback this year. He is. I still don't love their outside weapons outside of tight end. I don't disagree. Yeah, I mean, Bowers is legitimate, yeah. but outside of that. Yeah. Which is really shocking. I mean, it, it seems like I mean, in recruiting, you follow it more than I do, but they get four- and five-star yeah. wide receivers that just yeah. don't seem to pan out. They, that position has eluded them since they had, what, A.J. Green? And- Even the backs, though, when you, when you look at, you know, Brian <coughs> Cook and, and Milton, uh, the backs aren't what they used it's, to have. It's not what they had when they had Chubb yeah, and Ryan, Gurley. Yeah, I mean, they were just first-round backs every year. But having said that, they, they play the offense to the strength of the defense. And they usually generally take care of the football. They're going to run it first and play solid special teams. But that defense is so, so, so good. It's Bama and Bourbon, brought to you by our friends at the Beverage Place, Pink Package Store, with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I'm Lance Taylor. We talk Alabama football. We talk bourbon this weekend, Wilderness Trail, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Where are you, are, where are you on this? It's pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's, you can tell the proof is, is way up there. Um, but it finishes very sweet. I want to ask you, because, you know, I have to make picks every week for the athletic. And we pick against the line. And against the line, I'm actually doing fairly well. But we only pick SEC teams. Did you have Clemson or Florida State last week? We only do oh, SEC teams. Okay, I was about to say, did you watch any of that? <laughs> Clemson's first cover, I did have them minus the nine and a half. And I did think something was going to happen on that. The lateral play... It has hurt me. It's helped me. But yeah. the lateral play, you're, you're always you're, in. It was setting up to hurt somebody. You just saw that coming. But do you ever have teams that you can't figure out? Georgia. Like, I'm one in five that, against the number this year on Georgia. You know what team is, is this for me this year is Mississippi State. Oh. The, the weeks I pick them, they can fall flat. The weeks but I pick they, against they them. They can play so good and so bad. They, they are. I mean, Georgia's just consistently, like, dominant. Yeah. And I've just been on the wrong side oh, of those. No, I had Florida. Yeah. I had Auburn. I had UAB. I just made some bad play. I had Clemson. So the one game that I had, I had Arkansas. I had Kentucky when Kentucky yeah. backdoored that one. But, I, yeah, I get it. 
But that is a maddening product that is Mississippi State because on a given Saturday, I yes. think they're good enough to yes. beat anybody. Yes, and especially the way they play if they get hot. Another team that always gets me is Kentucky. I can't figure them out either. Well, they I'm always on the wrong side of them. Tough game this weekend against Tennessee. I mean, on paper, Tennessee what you've seen. Game. Yeah, you would think that. I mean, a lot of people would believe Kentucky's going to win the game, but Kentucky's only one point favorite. Yeah, I, I would take Tennessee. Yeah. So it's Alabama, a, you lay it. I think so. Yeah, I think I'm I mean, going to lay it too. I think it's important for Alabama to sort of establish what they want to be this stretch run. And if you have to take it out on LSU, an undermanned LSU team, that's what you do. Is there anything else coming up dangerous wise for Alabama outside of Auburn? I would have thought, we talked about this early in the season, Arkansas. Yeah. And it still potentially could be the way Arkansas is capable of playing, especially on, with Alabama's offensive line issues. But I, I just, if you've covered Alabama for any period of time, you see that, that you know, schedule at the end of the year, every year, it's at Auburn, in Jordan here. That one, it, it should be really scary for Alabama. Hey, make sure you tell your friends, family, tell them to uh, like, subscribe the podcast every week. It's Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. Make sure you read his stuff, follow him, subscribe there. It is brought to you by the Beverage Place located next to the PGA Superstore on Highway 280. Pink Package located across from Target next to Arby's on Highway 280. Go see Joe and Santana and Chan, all the fine folks there. They've got everything you want. They open early, they close late, open at 9 a.m. every day except Sunday where they open at noon. Get in, pick up a bottle of the Wilder. Wilderness Trail, Kentucky Straight Bourbon, very good small batch, single barrel, bottled in bond. Get a bottle this weekend and watch uh, Alabama curb stomp LSU. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. I think you're not excited about this one. Uh, no, it's a night game. I, I I like night games except for the fact that I know it's gonna be a long night for me riding. But the atmosphere that, that they've created in Bryant Denny for night games, and I don't know if you've been to a night game yeah. yet. With the lights, I know it's sort of cheesy and overplayed, but no. it's, it adds a lot to that atmosphere. Um, but two of my top, and, and, and this will be our final hit here, but two of my top five atmospheres all-time Bryant-Denny have been LSU games, 11 and 19. The two, the, I was still in an undergrad at Alabama, but the 07 game that Alabama lost, and I just sat in the student section, was one of the most electric games I've ever been to. Javier returns that late to... Touchdown. Didn't Julio have a touchdown in that one? Julio wasn't there yet. Okay. It was 07. And the year LSU won the national championship with two losses. But um, they've had some good atmospheres at night there. Was that when, uh, was was it, uh, who was the safety? Chad Jones that was so good mm-hmm. for yep. LSU? Yeah. And John Parker fumbled late and yep. they got a late touchdown. But that was a great game. And there's been some, this is a series that's, you know, been really tight over the years. That's why it's so shocking to see that big number. Hey, special thanks. Uh, watching Bama and Bourbon again. Tell your friends. With Aaron Suttles from The Athletic, I'm Lance Hill for the next round. Have a great weekend and pick up some Wilderness Trail, Kentucky, straight bourbon.